Hello students and welcome to this section and today we're going to discuss about primary amenorrhea. Uh, recently I actually posted one of my case discussions on primary and secondary amenorrhea and uh, there was a demand on a conceptual uh, class so that in, uh, in short and crisp I can just describe to you the funda behind primary amenorrhea. See this is not a very uh, oft uh, seen case in your, uh, uh, in your um, institute. But nevertheless, when it comes, you got to know these discrete points about it because it's a very, uh, you know, fluid uh, uh, diagnosis. It's not very uh, difficult to understand the cause behind it because usually things are pretty discrete and pretty obvious right there in front of you. All you have to do is do it, scrutinize it properly. And if suppose a patient comes to any, uh, you know, um, Institute with primary amenorrhea right around exams. This case is definitely going to be there as one of your short cases. So please and please make your fundas totally correct today. That's the reason why I'm taking up this class. Now, this class is going to be pretty conceptual. So I'll not be telling you things. In fact, I'm going to ask you things and you will yourself know when to and what to answer and what to look forward to. This way is you will conceptualize and remember everything about primary amenorrhea and your fundas will stay for life if you listen to this class properly. Now listen, let me just start from the beginning. A patient comes to you, a patient who's not menstruating. That means see the funda, the, the recent definition of primary amenorrhea is that any patient who is exhibiting secondary sexual characteristics if she doesn't achieve minarch at the age of 15 or a person who is not exhibiting any sex secondary sexual characteristics and also not attained minarch at the age of 13 by definition is actually primary amenorrhea. So first of all definition is very important. Now just imagine that a patient who has not been able to achieve minarch that means there is something wrong somewhere in the HPO and outlet disorders. That means either the hypothalamus pituitary is not working fine or they are not able to put the signals on to the, to the, to the ovary or the ovary is not functioning fine or there is some problem with the outlet. With this funda, we'll begin today's class. Hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormones. Finally, the pituitary is stimulated to release FSH, LH. They, uh, on the other hand, they stimulate the ovary to release estrogen, progesterone. Estrogen primes the uterus, progesterone leads to secretory phase. And finally, both these hormones, when they decrease, menstruation takes place, provided there is an outflow uh, patent system. There is no obstruction to the outflow. That is the funda of, you know, your menstrual cycle, which everybody knows. So where are we falling short and understanding primary amenorrhea? Let's now begin with the fact and conceptual part of this particular topic. Now, first of all, when a patient walks to you, complains to you that I've never not been able to achieve minag, the second most important thing, what you like to see is whether there are any secondary sexual characteristics. That means whether she's, she's got, you know, breast development is there or not. If there, there is breast development, whether axillary hair, pubic hair are also present or not. And above all, the tanner staging. Sometimes, you know, the breast and uh, pubic hair development is there, but the tanner stage is very early on. You know, tanner stage 1 or tanner stage 2, you can't even say whether there is actually secondary sexual characteristics. Looks like some priming has taken place, but it's not actually up to the level of a 16-year-old girl. So anyways, this is called tanner staging. And tanner staging, mind you, will always be asked to you. It's very confusing. More confusing because you don't get to see many cases and you don't get to, you know, document it very often. So the practice gets lost. So there is a class I've made on puberty in which I've described specifically about the tanner staging. Please go and watch that class because once you've seen that class, tanner staging is going to remain in your mind always. It's a very flowy way in which you can remember tanner staging. There's going to be no confusion. I will take a lot of time to understand what is standard stage 2, what is 3, what is the difference between 3 and 4, what is the difference between 2 and 3, but it's very nicely given, you will never forget it. So that's standard staging. The other very important, uh, which I remembered over here is hirsutism, ferrum and Galway scoring. Another a little confusing thing, how many sides to see, what is 0, what is 4, which is the maximum, which is the minimum, what is in between, how do we know whether it is 2 or how, how, how do we notice 3. So that also I've described in uh, the class which I've recently taken, uh, that is pubertal aberrations. Now, Coming back to the topic, <clears throat> so when a patient walks in, describes this problem, after you've defined, okay, fine, she is one of the candidates for uh, primary amenorrhea, the most important thing, even right now, even in the definition, is secondary sexual characteristics. So you have to notice whether she has got 
any secondary sexual characteristics or not while you're examining her of course and you can ask her also whether you know there was any breast budding breast mound development of breast do you have axillary hair do you have pubic hair and of course when you're examining that time you'll do the tanner staging but you will ask her in your in your history and by then we'll move forward so just imagine suppose the patient has secondary sexual characteristics maybe an early tanner staging let's say tanner staging 2 what does it tell you think about it a secondary sexual characteristic development what does it tell you well it tells you that estrogen has been there in the body either it is currently there or it was there it did its effect now it might not be present because of premature ovarian failure whatever may, may be the reason but estrogen has already been there in the body of this patient that means most likely the hpo axis was working at some point in time and now the question arises on the outlet disorder that you know thing should be there in your mind should strike your mind so that means peripheral estrogens were present maybe it got converted from androgen to estrogen or whatever it might be but estrogen was present in the body and it did its effect it did its, it did its job or whatever so she has got a secondary sexual characteristics let's focus on the outlet now how will you do that you first see the vaginal orifice of the patient sometimes in some institutes one finger uh, you know pv is also allowed in such patients obviously you cannot speak this in case, in your examination you usually say pv was not attempted or pv was not <coughs> was not done because patient was not comfortable or not allowing but at least you should see whether the vagina is blind or not by just you know splitting away the vaginal uh, you know the labial folds and you can just see whether it's a blind vagina or there is you know a tract vaginal tract is there or not so now so now suppose if the vagina is absent there is no vagina what will be your next step what will you do the tract is not present the vagina is blind so next question is whether the uterus is present or not okay now the next thing that you will do is to order for an ultrasound okay what if the vagina is present so next step in both the cases is similar whether vagina is present or not does the does not finally end it over there we need to know what's above it so if vaginal tract is present or absent we still want to know whether the uterus is present or not see if the vagina is absent and the uterus is present obvious that there is some you know disorder in the flow tract that means she'll be complaining of cyclical pain she'll give, describe certain things to you which will you know 2 plus 2 will uh, equal to 4 will become from there that means probably there is vaginal septum or you know and bl uh, blind end to the vaginal maybe you're not able to see it properly there is a vaginal tract and you, the septum is blocking the way or there is an perforate hymen that's a totally different case anyways so uh, suppose now the vagina let's talk about this part first suppose the vaginal tract is present and the uterus is also present okay so the vagina is fine the uterus is fine so what is the what is it which is you know not letting the menstruation take place in that case what you do is vagina present uterus is also present now what could be the cause that means either it is a constitutional delay so you will just describe the patient to be you know reassurance you will give the patient reassurance and you will let the patient be now if suppose the vaginal tract is present but uterus is absent so the vaginal tract is present the uterus is absent that means mullerian agenesis some part of because lower part of vagina is present okay that is developed separately you should know that that fallopian tube uterus cervix and upper part of vagina all are derivatives of the mullerian duct that's called mullerian tract so if mullerian you know insensitivity or mullerian agenesis is there that means uterus will not be present some lower part of vagina might be present so it's either mullerian agenesis or it is androgen insensitivity syndrome in that case mind you if it is androgen insensitivity syndrome the physiology is totally different the pathophysiology is totally different that means that patient is not a male the patient is actually so, sorry the patient is not a female the patient is actually a male but there is androgen insensitivity syndrome that means the androgen is not able to act on the peripheral organs as a result of which there is no beard mustache any secondary sexual characteristic of a male finally what you see is actually a phenotype of the female because androgens are getting converted into 
estrogens and estrogen is showing its effect as a phenotypical body of a female so the next step over here in this case will be karyotyping which will tell you whether it's a male or a female obviously telling you whether it is you know your mayor okitansky or custer hauser syndrome that is mullerian agenesis or it is androgen insensitivity syndrome all right this part okay then we come to this part vagina is absent and now let's talk about uterus so vagina is also absent uterus is also absent again it is one of these sequelae this part is this actually maybe it is mullerian agenesis maybe it is androgen insensitivity syndrome so the next step is karyotyping but vagina is absent uterus is present this is actually disorders of sexual differentiation maybe hermaphroditic changes or something like that so this is actually the ambiguous sex and ambiguous uh, you know genitalia or disorders of sexual differentiation should not be calling it ambiguous genitalia so disorders of sexual dsd disorders and this is why it is separate this part i'll take in the next class